Are the Boeing Starliner astronauts stranded at the ISS? Boeing Starliner launched on June 5th with a planned eight-day mission. The astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, are still at the ISS. There is currently no return date. Are they stranded? This has been the subject of a lot of debate over the past week. Let me break down what is going on with the mission and whether the astronauts are actually stranded. I kind of get into the weeds on technicalities with this one. But let's start with the basics because there have been a lot of misleading headlines lately. The Boeing Starliner astronauts do not require a rescue from SpaceX. There are no plans to bring them home aboard any vehicle except Boeing Starliner. NASA does believe the vehicle is safe. So then, why the delay? Well, Boeing Starliner's first crewed test flight has not exactly gone well. Let me first emphasize that this is a test flight, and problems happen on test flights. That's why we have them. But still, I'd say that this one is less than ideal. And complicating all of this is the public perception of Boeing right now. Boeing is not a company people trust for good reason, given the problems with their aviation business, which is separate from Starliner. It is harder to give them the benefit of the doubt here because we're all kind of biased against Boeing right now. Even if these issues weren't a huge deal, it's hard to just take their word for it. So let's talk about what are the problems. The first issue actually cropped up before the vehicle even launched on June 5th. The initial launch date, at least if we're not taking into account the years of delays that came before this, for more on that, check out my previous video on Boeing Starliner. That original launch date was May 7th, 2024, but that launch was scrubbed due to a problem with the launch vehicle. When they rolled the rocket back, they thought it was just a simple pressure valve replacement on the Atlas V rocket. But while they had the rocket and spacecraft back in the vertical integration building, they decided to check out a helium leak that they had found after the launch was scrubbed. NASA and Boeing decided that this wasn't an issue that needed to be fixed before the launch, so they proceeded for another attempt on June 1st. That launch was scrubbed due to an issue with ground equipment, not the rocket or spacecraft. They tried again on June 5th, and they succeeded. The launch went off smoothly. Now, the reason the engineers decided that this helium leak didn't need to be fixed was because helium is a noble gas, an inert gas. That means it doesn't really react to other things. It's not going to explode. It's not really going to cause problems. It's not great to have a leak, but a helium leak, overall, they decided wasn't a big deal. They thought they understood the nature of the leak, that it was the result of a flange, and it was very small at the time, which is why they chose not to fix it. But when they got into orbit, they found more problems. On June 5th, before the crew's scheduled sleep session, they found more helium leaks, and the existing one got bigger. There are currently five helium leaks in Starliner's service module. Now this is an issue. Helium is generally a leaky gas, and it can be hard to work with, but you don't want five leaks springing on a spacecraft. Helium isn't used as propellant, but it's used in the propulsion system to basically maintain pressurization and push fuel to the thrusters. Not having enough helium or not having the right pressurization could affect maneuvers in orbit or for re-entry. Right now, they are not concerned about the amount of helium left. They need about seven hours of helium to undock and conduct the deorbit burn for re-entry. And they have about 10 times that, around 70 hours. That is plenty of margin, and the spacecraft is not leaking helium while it's docked to the ISS. They closed the manifolds that had the leaks in order to manage the amount of helium the spaceship was losing. But a bigger problem came up with Boeing Starliner as it got ready to dock with the ISS. Five of the vehicle's 28 reaction control thrusters failed. These thrusters are built by Rocketjet Aerodyne, not Boeing, and they're used primarily for on-orbit maneuvering. It's important to note that Starliner has RCS thrusters on basically the capsule and the service module and the ones that are malfunctioning are on the service module. Butch and Sunny held the spacecraft 200 meters away from the ISS as they checked, rechecked, reset, and performed hot fire tests on each of the failed thrusters. They managed to get four of them operational. They're not even trying with the fifth one because the readings were so off. The vehicle was able to dock with the ISS on June 6th. And almost a month later, they are still there. 
At the very beginning of the mission, NASA made it clear that while the initial flight was only scheduled for seven or eight days, they might take much longer than that. They really wanted to put this vehicle through its paces and run every test they could in order to collect as much data as possible on the performance of Starliner. ISS activities were cleared for the whole summer to make sure Starliner had as much flexibility to operate as possible. But this is still a lot longer than anyone anticipated. Originally, NASA and Boeing officials were concerned about Starliner's batteries, which limited the mission to 45 days. However, data from the batteries have shown that they're in good shape and have even recharged on the ISS. The batteries are still a risk, but it's basically the same amount of risk for the first 45 days as the next 45 days if the batteries are performing well, which they are. The vehicle was originally built for a 210-day mission. The reason they're staying so long, it's basically to figure out what is going on with these two separate issues that Starliner is facing. And they do think they are separate issues, even though it's all related to Starliner's thruster system in the service module. The thrusters are located in what are called dog houses on Starliner. There are four of them total. Basically, the helium leaks are in different dog houses than the failing thrusters, so they think they're likely unrelated. But the point is, they still don't know for sure. And that's the problem, and that is why the astronauts are still up there. All of these issues are located within Starliner's service module, which does not come back to Earth. It is jettisoned before re-entry, and that means there's no opportunity to directly study these problems after re-entry. They need to figure out why they're happening and fix them before the first operational flight. And frankly, if NASA wants to certify Starliner for that operational flight, they have to figure out what's going on. They're tackling the problems by conducting tests on orbit while also testing on the ground. Boeing is taking that thruster profile they saw on orbit and trying to replicate that on the ground at White Sands. They're working through what's called a fault tree, which if you're an engineer, you're probably very familiar with this. If you're not, it's basically taking an undesirable outcome, like these leaks or thruster failures, and using a top-down approach to figure out why they are happening. But in order to do this analysis, they have to figure out how these faults move through the Starliner system. That takes a lot of time. Now, the reason they're not just bringing the astronauts back and doing ground testing? It's because having Sonny and Butch on the ISS to do their own testing if the ground analysis revealed something is really valuable. And they didn't even start this testing until this week, July 2nd, and it might take a while, a few weeks or longer, to complete the testing. And that is why they currently don't have a return date. They will not set one until they are finished with testing and they have the results and they know why this is happening. So the question now is, are the astronauts stranded at the ISS? The short answer is no, but the longer answer is, well, it's complicated. From the information I've been given both on and off the record, as well as my own understanding and analysis of the problems with the spacecraft, I do really think that Starliner is safe for reentry. And I also know that NASA does not care in the least about Boeing versus SpaceX when it comes to the safety of its own astronauts. If they did not have confidence in Starliner's ability to bring the crew home safely, they absolutely would come up with a backup plan that probably would involve SpaceX's Crew Dragon. But again, all of these issues are in Starliner's service module. The capsule itself has been performing very well, and that's the part that needs to work for reentry. And NASA isn't currently concerned about the service module's ability to position the Starliner capsule for re-entry before jettison. NASA and Boeing are very touchy about the question of astronauts being stranded, which was on display at a press conference last week. They maintain that the astronauts are not stranded at the ISS. I can't believe I'm pulling up Merriam-Webster, but... Technically, the definition of stranded, according to the dictionary, is, quote, to leave in a strange or an unfavorable place, especially without funds or means to depart. Well, the ISS is absolutely a strange place, and the astronauts don't currently have a return date. It is understandable why. They don't want to keep setting and delaying a return date because that looks bad, and it is bad. The key here is that NASA has said again and again that in an emergency, or if Sonny and Butch needed to leave the ISS immediately for some reason and return to Earth, they could do so aboard Starliner. So I guess they do have a means to depart, but we just don't know when. I'm getting really in the weeds here with technicalities at this point. But while I don't have a lot of patience for the SpaceX is going to rescue Boeing astronauts headlines, because that is untrue right now, 
I am not saying that absolutely will never happen at some point because I have enough experience to know that space flight is unexpected and you cannot really predict anything. But I will say this whole situation is frankly bizarre. It is understandable why NASA and Boeing are extending the mission like this. They want this data and it's clear that the certification process for the spacecraft is already going to be a bit of a mess because of how badly this test flight is going. If they want to certify Starliner for a flight before SpaceX deorbits the ISS, which is where Starliner is supposed to fly to, in case you missed it, SpaceX was chosen to develop the vehicle that will deorbit the ISS in 2030 or 2031. All we know about it right now is that it will be a version of Dragon with a modified trunk. But if they want to fly Starliner's first operational flight soon, and I mean, it's absolutely not happening before 2025, and I think even at this point, the first half of 2025 might be a stretch, they have to figure out the root cause of these problems. This frankly is a mess, and it's hard to cover because you don't want to downplay the problem, but you also don't want to exaggerate it and write misleading or clickbait headlines. But it seems to me that this is a mess that Boeing and NASA do currently have a handle on. We will see if that changes because it very well could change. But for now, that is all I have to tell you about Boeing Starliner. Thank you for watching. I am Swapna Krishna, and this is Ad Astra.